a couple of days later on. Well, normally when we go to Burn, we talk about what's happening around the world, but all of the action over the last few days, Burn has been what's been happening across the Tasman. Hey Jeff, or maybe what's not happening across the Tasman, Sansa is scrambling to save the rugby championship. There's been finger pointing, curse words, and neither side really giving an inch. Let's have a quick recap. So Rugby Australia boss, Andy Marinos, he's crying foul, saying he only found out that the All Blacks weren't coming to Perth via the media. Now, in a statement, he says, it's incredibly disappointing to be informed of this decision via the media, despite having a conversation with the CEO moments before. And there was no mention that this was the intention. Now, NZR CEO Mark Robinson disagrees. He says that's simply not true. He told News Talk ZB. We had uh, calls right through from sort of Wednesday, Thursday. Um, we put something in writing on Thursday, and then um, we spoke to them before um, uh, before anything was released. It's the classic he said, she said, though no one said anything to Dave Rennie. The Wallaby coach, quote, bloody angry. Yeah, oh, look, I think it's, it's disappointing how it's been communicated. Um, yeah, our boys all found out through social media. Um, so, you know, I thought New Zealand Rugby didn't even have the respect to consult RA about their decision. And uh, so that's, that's hugely disappointing. So clearly, clearly there's been a comms issue and it's not distance that keeps people, teams, businesses and organisations apart. It's communication. Well, one South African Juno has been pretty clear in his comms. We've heard from him before, Mark Kiahain. He's called for the All Blacks to either be ditched from the competition altogether or to forfeit points. He must remember, though, that South Africa, his own team, withdrew from the TRC last year, citing player welfare issues. Meanwhile, those who actually make the decisions, good luck with that one, Sansa, they've got no shortage of takers to host the rugby championship. South Africa's jumping up and down with the old pick me, pick me banner, the national coach and also the CEO of South Africa Rugby is saying they would love to host the tournament. They're well versed in turning on rugby tests within the prevailing COVID restrictions and have the venues and accommodation necessary. We just need the go ahead. The Lions beating the Pumas 29 to 10 on Sunday, by the way. Even Wembley has been touted as a possible venue. According to the UK Telegraph, the RFU has said it's always open to discussion regarding the global calendar. And what about the States? The All Blacks are due to play a test there on October the 23rd. The stadium in Washington DC can host 80,000 people. They're hoping though for between 30 and 40,000 ticket sales. They'll be happy with that. And if they do, it will still surpass what we got for the second Bledisloe at Eden Park. Rugby Australia hopes to lock down September the 4th in Queensland as the first fixture there. Marinos demanding in writing from the All Blacks that they'll attend or face a $5 million bill for bailing. Stand down, Australia Rugby. Call off the lawyers. It sounds like the All Blacks intend to be on a plane on Saturday. But for now, it's a wait and watch. Australia and New Zealand, they seem to be stuck in a loveless marriage for now. Paul Cully from the Sydney Morning Herald writes, now that the children have grown up and flown the coop, South Africa to Europe's new rugby competition, Australia and New Zealand are staring at each other in an empty house with the dreadful realisation they don't really understand or possibly like each other. Whenever the All Blacks leave, wherever their destination, the relationship between the trans-Tasman rivals is anything but loved up. In fact, I'd go as far to say we're on a break. Well, the All Blacks had planned, of course, to be in Perth this week, preparing for a test match against the Wallabies. News over the weekend that they wouldn't be travelling across the Tasman. Sam Whitelock, the All Black captain, joins us here on the breakdown tonight. And thanks for joining us, Sam. And first thing I've got to ask you is the fact that as All Black captain and part of the Players Association as a representative, what role did you possibly play in the discussions with New Zealand Rugby? Yeah, it's uh, something um, for myself, the, the older you get, the more involved you get in some of these politic things. Um, 
still pretty keen on being a rugby player, let alone um, getting involved in this. But for us, we, we played a, a small part in it. Obviously, the NZRU took the lead on it. Um, really good having uh, the RPA board there of you know current players, but also all these other people that can help um, inform you of what's going on. Um, one thing I would say around all of it is the information that was coming out was amazing how quickly things were changing through uh, SANSA, NZAU, and the other unions, um, just how quickly it moved. And I, I think something that's probably overlooked is how actually fast everyone you know, adapted and adjusted. And I think we're going to get there with the rugby championship, and, and I really want it to get there. So fingers crossed we're on the plane um, Saturday week. Plenty of reaction across the Tasman coming out of Australia and, and around the Wallabies. That has been suggested that you were in dialogue with Michael Hooper, the captain of the Wallabies. Is that the case? And if it was, what were you talking to him about? Yeah, it's something that um, Hoops took the lead on. Uh, sent um, Sam Kane and myself an email. Um, obviously, CC Matt Tamurin as well, who, you know, all of us are on international players association boards and things like that, played against each other heaps. and. There's always a bit of that talk back and forth of what's the best thing for the game, and this was just another opportunity for us to to connect and um, go through as, as player to players um, to work out what you know we're potentially looking at, what is is good. Um, and you know, first there's a couple of emails, and I was like, I'll bugger this. Let's just get out the phone and get on the get on the phone and talk. And it's amazing how um, at times we probably get caught up, and you know, we're playing Australia, so. You know, you want to build the, the intensity and stuff, but um, they're all great guys, and it's it's good to have that connection. You know, somewhere else around the world, um, time will tell. Do you agree with the decision New Zealand Rugby made and the fact that to delay leaving New Zealand uh, to compete in the Rugby Championship? Yeah, I think it was a, a smart decision. Um, I think the reason it was a smart decision was because of the uncertainty of not only New Zealand and Australia, but also um, the two others being Argentina and South Africa and, and what that looks like for them to get into Australia. Um, but as I said before, like I, I think it's going to go ahead and I really hope it does. And I, I'm very excited to hopefully play uh, play my part um, in playing hopefully a, attractive rugby for the rugby championship because for us as Kiwis, this is such a, a massive tournament for us playing against um, all the guys down south and um, having South Africa back in it this year will be uh, be awesome. We haven't had a, a look at them since uh, playing them round robin at, at the World Cup. What do you guys then need to be certain of before you get on a plane, head offshore, knowing the fact you're going to be away for 14 weeks? Yeah, I think the first thing is making sure we know um, that the games are actually going to go ahead. Um, but besides that, you know, for me as a rugby player, that's not my job to sort that out. That's uh, CEO, Sanzo, etc. And, and I know they're working their, their guts out at the moment to, to get those things done. And it can't be that easy with COVID because COVID keeps throwing things um, left, right and centre. But um, I know that they're out there with uh, the players and the tournament um, at heart. That They know that um, if there's an opportunity to play it, every player is keen to get out there and, and um, so am I, so can't wait to hopefully get on the, the plane and, and get into it. Look, there's no doubt there's a lot of positives um, coming out of the All Black performances through the course of the season, but the fact you're facing this adversity, maybe some uncertainty right now for coach Ian Foster in terms of his future, how does that in some way, does that affect your on-field performance? Um, probably a really good question at the end of the year to ask, but I think at the moment... It, Personally, I think it's actually really good for us. Um, it's making us challenge ourselves um, around how we're performing. Are we distractible from, you know, potentially what's being said in the media or what people were saying? Um, is it actually taking away from what we're trying to do on the field? Well, check out. It looks as though the players themselves, because of the uncertainty, are of course very supportive of what New Zealand Rugby have decided to do in this case. Look, reality was they don't know where the rugby championship's going to be played and when it's going to be played. Do you agree with the decision not to travel in Perth and play this weekend? Yeah, totally. I, I, look, we're in COVID. The thing that upset me the most was, I don't know where the misinformation was, but what Dave Rennie said actually annoyed me a wee bit because we're in COVID. Um, players don't know where they're going, what's happening. For me, it's people's safety first. I mean, I want to see everything played because, you know, 
that I also believe sports really, really important. Live sports important to have on, on uh, you know, on Sky so that people can get some enjoyment. But I just think the reaction was wrong, and it sounded to me like you know the right communication had been done. There must be a lack of comms down to Dave Rennie or certain parts of of the team. I don't know what you think, Mills, but I, you know this. I don't know whether it's one-upmanship or trying to get a dig in or something, but we just got to forget it. That's not rugby, man. We got to work together. Yeah, and I guess um, I probably share the, the same thoughts, JK. I think now you've had a couple of days to sort of uh, a few days to think about that decision and the, logistically what it sort of looks like. It all sort of seems like it was just um, you know sort of hot-headed, you know, come out and all guns blazing without really thinking about what it looked like. It'd be interesting that. You know, if this would have been the same thoughts in, in terms of the Albury, <laughs> but I think given the times and the and the, you know, the uncertainty, I think it's it, it was time to take a, a breath, have a look, reassess. And the reality is, right now, we don't know if South Africa or Argentina are going to be allowed in. Um, and you know, what's the use of having a game, a one-off game, when you, the, uh, the All Blacks go over there? Um, and then get over there and then find the championship is off. I mean, what, what do you go to to that? So I think it's a, um, having having a few days to think about it and um, and listening to what, you know, Sam's mentioned, uh, one thing that really stood out is, you know, the players are having a conversation. Now, I mean, why can't that then translate, you know, to the boardroom? Because it seems like there's two different uh, conversations going on or um, they're having a conversation and then all of a sudden someone comes out, you know, like a Dave Rennie in the media and then, um, a, a conversation is forgotten about, um, you know, conveniently or, or vice versa. But it, it's it's it saddens me in some way because you know in, in a um, in an environment that we're at, you know, we've worked you know so hard with with the Australians. You think about the history that we have had over the war and things, and you know, at the moment, you know, our communication for, for things such so simple as what would what it seems like right now is just um, it's just not evident at all. Yeah, can I just jump in there because I think we've got a fundamental issue with the leadership of our game. You know, this is not, this is not, this is a game where we can show way more transparency. The, 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 the people running the game are always playing the secret squirrel thing. I mean, it's a game. But no, so if they're all involved in an open plan and an open transparency, then this confusion wouldn't come in, right? This is what I don't understand. Why is this all this secret squirrel stuff? Why don't they just say every day, and then people would know how quickly it changed because what I got from Sam was how quickly this has changed or, and does change over, you know, a few days. So stop being so secretive. Just get it out there. doesn't matter if you change the decision. We're not going to treat you badly. Well, there's no doubt, though, the circumstances have changed from when the original conversations and changes were made early on in the season to the Bledisloe Cup. The fact that the Wallabies in, in Australian rugby had to make sacrifices to change dates to accept playing back-to-back -back games in New Zealand at Eden Park, which obviously didn't suit them and it didn't probably give them the best opportunity to try and win back with the Zlo Cup, but also the fact that pushing back a game in Perth, I mean, they've obviously got a sentiment for the fact that New Zealand rugby has in some way let them down. And is that fair, JK or, or Mills? And I'll go with you, Mills, on this one. Is that fair given the circumstances we're dealing with? Oh, look, I, I totally understand. You know, when you when you look at it and the, why the frustration, you know, they've obviously bent over backwards to get here. But let's let's not forget, you know, where we were before, you know, this all happened. You know, when when uh, when our borders have just have, you know now now they've closed. You know, even getting out now in terms of the Delta variant, things have changed since they they came over. Yes, they 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 got on the plane um, and got in here before that the whole those new restrictions happened. Given and and this this is before all this Delta stuff happened, remember? This has all got to do with what happened in, in Sydney and things like that. And it's it's constantly moving. And I, I think that's what your point is, JK. This is COVID. You know, so at that particular time, they felt the need to get over here. Um, they obviously spoke about it. They've bent over backwards to be here. Not ideal, yes, given the circumstances to, to try and win that cut back. But this has changed once again. You know, now we're gonna, you know, we're going over there with the uncertainty that this whole competition is not going to happen. You know, South Africa can't come in. Initially, well, they've got, you know, um, spots, MIQ spots in Sydney. But look at look at the, the way the world's changed over there. I mean, these protests at the moment. So how can they get into a, you know, a, a red from a red flag, you know, country into another state? And this is a, a, another aspect of it. Because Australia's, you know, these state 
there's different rules for each state, so they've got to consider that. So I'll go back to where I suppose Dave Brenny and and, all, and, and uh, Australian rugby assume. Yeah, I can see that they're frustrated, but if you if you pull all that frustration back and have a look at the details, which I'm sure they have now over the last couple of days, that's that's probably become more evident now that hey, it probably was a sensible decision to, to be able to make. Let's reassess and see if they're going. The All Blacks are not saying they don't want to play. They do want to play. Let's let's give it some time and see. You know um, where where government stand, uh, where the restrictions stand, and then and then obviously make a decision around that. But I just I just think, they, um, yeah, they went out there um, hot headed or whatnot, um, whatever you want to call it, and perhaps they needed to take a step back, have a think about it. This wasn't a case of New Zealand trying to get one over you. Um, it, it was purely based on what it, what did it look like, you know, down the track. Yeah, so JK, that does that mean? If you, no, hang on. We've used COVID so that we don't have to go and play the third letters low cup or the, or the initial championship, right? No, no, we haven't. This is, and look, the Australians have made incredible sacrifices and, and to that I thank them because, the, you know, the two test series was amazing in our country. Then things changed. I mean, you can't blame the NZR for COVID. We can't blame Australia if they say you can't come to Perth now because we're closed. That's not their fault. They've got to look after their people. So. I, I just think that as rugby people, I keep coming back to it. I think what Sam uh, said gave me a lot of hope that the players are picking up the phone and talking to each other. Um, I just hope that Andy Marinos is picking up the phone and keeping Dave Rennie informed because I can understand his frustration, but you don't take COVID out on a on New Zealand rugby. That's just, you know, I mean, this is a really, really difficult world for all of us at the moment. And trying to get sports done is is, an incredibly challenging time when things are changing every day.